everybody, welcome back to the Bay Volts channel. Another loss, unfortunately, the Tim Bay Lightning snapping their six game winning streak, falling five to two to the Florida Panthers. My name is Michael Wax. I am joined as always with my co-host, Jake Ricker. Jake, how are you doing tonight? I'm doing all right, Michael. I know it, you know it's a tough loss after you know winning six games against the a big rival, big Florida rival too. And, you know, it was, it was a tough game, but I think there are some positives out of this game. And listen, we knew this was coming. These schedules are going to be tough. The Florida Panthers are a very good team, but let me tell you something. These next two games against the Panthers are going to be some great hockey games. Yeah. And I think a lot of people thought that the next three games on the lightning schedule coming in to the middle of the week, were going to be probably the biggest three games for the lightning facing up against a Panthers squad that was at the time only one or only three points behind them in the standings. Panthers getting out to their best start since I believe the mid nineties uh, before the game, they came into uh, this game with a record of eight or seven, one and two, just a fantastic uh, performance by the coach. He led Panthers, but we would not go into this game at full strength. It was announced about 30 minutes before game time. Uh, Dave Randorf, as well as uh, Eric Erlinson, a couple other of the Lightning reporters announcing that Steven Stamkos was not on the ice for warmups. He is day-to-day -day with an injury. I think it's a lower body injury. I don't remember there being a, 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 a play or a moment where that seemed to be nagging for Steven Stamkos but in the last game against Nashville, but obviously a tough blow to the Lightning's game. Yeah, anytime you lose your captain, obviously that's, you know, never a good thing, especially so late, um, right before the game start. That doesn't help either as well. So, and you're right, I don't know what caused this. My guess is something maybe happened at practice. This could have had something happen today, you know. Players get hurt for crazy reasons sometimes. I remember uh, the Rays, they lost Blake Snell for a game because I think he dropped his furniture on his toe. Uh, so, you know, who knows what happened here? I don't think it's any major concern right now. I know a lot of people are going to say, oh, Stamkos is made of glass. But remember, we made a video, Michael, on Steven Stamkos proving that that's just not the case. I'll link it up in the top right so you can check it out too if you haven't seen it. But you know, he's just day to day. I'm sure he'll be back very soon. Uh, hopefully this is just something minor and something happened where, you know, I don't know, maybe he got sick, maybe he hurt his foot um, walking to the game, who knows, but um, hopefully he'll be back very soon. I don't think it's a major cause for concern, but definitely a huge downer for the team uh, to lose your captain because he's a huge part of this team. He's been playing well as of late uh, for the Bolts. He's been one of the top of two or three players for the Lightning this entire season. That's saying a lot considering the amount of talent that they have on this squad. Originally, when I saw the fact that he was out in this game, he was not on the ice for warmups, and the injury news had not come out yet, I actually thought it was similar to uh, Blake Coleman's situation, where he overslept on the uh, team meeting, and, you know, Cooper's, Cooper's law is Cooper's law, and, you know, he'll set anybody, whether you're the captain or Blake Coleman or Braden Point. Uh, but it turns out the entire Lightning team decided to sleep in uh, for the beginning of this game. Full credit to the Florida Panthers. They took advantage throughout the entire first 40 minutes. But, you know, we're going to start out with a negative. I thought the 40, first 40 minutes for the Lightning were awful. Uh, probably the worst stretch of hockey for the Lightning this entire season. They got a brief spurt of life when the power play came alive and Braden Point scored a goal off a nice feed from Andre Pilat. But overall, it was just not a good night, at least in the first two periods for the Lightning. You know, and you're absolutely right. The, the first two periods, it was all Florida Panthers. And like you said, I do think they deserve a lot of credit. You know, they're, they were a good, they've been getting better and better every year, but this year things are really clicking for them and they're a very good hockey team. So you cannot underestimate uh, this Florida Panthers team whatsoever. And, and they came out and they said, I think before this game is they said, this is going to be a big measure game for us to see how, uh, how good we actually are. And they came out and they played like it. They played fantastic. They were a step ahead of the bolts in basically every single way they were playing them super aggressively, not giving the lightning any room to work with, which a lot of teams have done and letting have made them pay for. So fantastic game plan by the Panthers and the Lightning were a step behind but and Michael I want to mention this too you know I remember I think it was yeah last year 
when the Lightning were, you know, playing, they were on about a six, seven game win streak, something like that. They were playing really good. And I was saying to myself, I'm like, one of these games, you know, you know how it works with the law of averages is going to go wrong. And it was the Vegas game for the Lightning where they ended up losing pretty badly. Uh, but the next thing you know, after a couple of games, they picked things right back up and got into it. I think this is the exact same scenario. Obviously, you want to play your best every single night, but the Lightning have won six in a row. You knew this game was coming eventually, um, and it did eventually catch back up to them. But uh, not a good first 40 minutes, but I do think there's some things to look at in this game that shows that this is going to be a battle. Remember, every time we've said, and I'm going to go on a little rant here, but um, you know, we've said for when the Lightning have beaten teams in the first game is that with this schedule, we're going to play the Panthers again. You know, the Lightning know this now. They're not like, all right, this team is legit. This team's ready to go. So they're going to come back out and play even harder on Saturday. Absolutely. I, I think you're 100% right. They are going to come out. Uh, as the hopefully better team on Saturday. But I think a lot of this has to do with the fact that, you know, this is Coach Q's, I believe, second season behind the bench with the Panthers. The one thing that he did really, really well against the Lightning was that he was able to keep them uh, on the boards. He was able to keep them in the neutral zone, in the defensive zone. That's the type of game plan that Coach Q draws up. And, you know, if they score, that's wonderful in terms of, you know, the Panthers or at that time the Blackhawks. If they score, that's great. They have so much offensive talent. But the defensive structure is really what made that Blackhawks team click. And I think that's what's happening with the Panthers right now. So full credit to Florida. I, I thought that they were the better team. But also, I, I it was just – it seemed to be a circumstance of Florida playing really good hockey and the Lightning playing some really bad hockey. Uh, luckily, in the third period, we saw that uh, switch a little bit. Uh, but one final negative that I, I want to get to, and we'll get to you in a minute, Jake. Uh, we mentioned this before we started recording. I don't know if Cal Foot was ready tonight. Uh, it really seemed like he was the seventh guy uh, in on the stat sheet or on the uh, on the the original roster. And I don't think he knew about the Stamkos injury until he was told, you're going to be in the lineup tonight. And with some rookies, they understand that when they get the call, they have to be prepared at all times because they don't know when they're going to get the call. Uh, with Foot, I, I think that was a rookie mistake today. He wasn't quite himself. He was playing with a bunch of different people. He made some uh, poor defensive choices, I believe, on the first goal where uh, Frank Vetrano uh, came in on the uh, two-on-one, or maybe it was the Alexander Winberg goal uh, that made it two-nothing. Uh, he took the, the shot instead of the pass, which is something that you don't normally see ended up leading to a Florida goal. Uh, I think it's a rookie mistake. I'll think it, I think he'll bounce back, but I don't think he was ready tonight. Yeah, and that's a that's a good point to make. I think you're probably right. He probably got thrown into things very late, as we mentioned, with Stamkos being out, and he probably wasn't ready. He clearly wasn't ready uh, for this game. So hopefully he knows now this is a valuable lesson. That's the thing, right? You know, you're going to lose games. You're going to have these tough games. But the important thing is, uh, and like we've seen the Bolts do, like for example, Sergachev, who played a couple of bad games and has been playing fantastic as of late. Hopefully Cal Foot takes that same route where he goes, okay, well, I know I've got to be ready to go at any moment. You know, it's it's going to be tough and I've got to make every single game count and going forward, he'll learn from all those mistakes he made tonight in that game and continue to improve. So uh, de definitely unfortunate for him to, to be thrown in there late and have a tough game, but I think you're right though. I do think he'll bounce back. I, there's no reason to believe that he won't. Uh, Michael, I also want to talk about too, staying on the negatives before we get into the, the, the couple of positives that we saw in this game too, as well. Uh, the, the penalties are still, I think, killer for the bolts right now. They didn't take a ton in this game, which was good. That was an improvement. However, they still had one of the, like the too many men on the ice call. Uh, you can just not do that against the Florida Panthers who have the best power play in the entire NHL. So that's something that they still really got to work on. We've seen some improvement here, which is good, but they really got to take out those silly penalties. Uh, you know, ones that they can obviously very easily prevent. You, you mentioned right there, I, I don't think it was necessarily the, the quality of the penalties. You could call them penalties or not at certain times, but it's in it, the quality. They only took three, but it's just the type of penalties that they're taking, whether it is 
interference, whether it's too many men on the ice. Those are the type of penalties that need to stop. Uh, and that's, I think, the most frustrating part is that these penalties are completely avoidable. Uh, you know, if you get uh, your hands uh, get hooked or if, if you hook somebody's hands like you're trying to go for the puck, that's a penalty where, like, I prefer you not to take it, but I understand. Like, you're going for the puck. You're making a play on the puck. Uh, the main things for me are tripping, too many men in the ice, and interference. Those are the ones where I really don't understand. Uh, you can make a case for tripping, but it's it's not 100% uh, accurate all the time in terms of a, a good penalty versus a bad penalty. Uh, but going from the, the negatives to the positives, uh, Jake, the biggest positive from this game was Braden Point. Uh, he was single-handedly... I believe dragging this offense into a competitive game uh, with two goals, both of which on the power play, the second one, absolutely fantastic uh, move, little shot fake and gets it over the shoulder of Bobrovsky. Uh, he wanted to win. And you can't say that about a lot of people tonight, but he really wanted to win. The, the players are going to have to be they, – they owe Braden Point a beer after this one because he, he looked fantastic. He really did. I mean, some quality plays. He was flying all over the ice. I think even the Florida Panthers realized about halfway through when he started to come alive there. Too, well, you I mean, he's really alive the whole game. But the Panthers even realized late in that third, they're like, holy cow, we need to shut this guy down because he might just single-handedly come back and win this game for the Bolts. Uh, he almost had a third one as well. He could have had a hat trick to pull the Bolts within one but was just – uh, barely off there at the end, but yeah, Braden Point, absolutely fantastic. I hope this continues, and I hope the the rest of the players look at this and say, "This is how we need to be playing every single night." Let's learn something from Braden Point, and let's come out the next game and play like he did. Because if they did, uh, you know, this is a completely different game. But all right, big big shout out to to Braden Point. I do think there's a couple other guys that did play well. They didn't play at the Braden Point level, uh, but I thought Sergachev uh, for the most part had a really good game. He had a couple of quality opportunities in that third period as well. Um, I think Vassy played all right tonight as well. I mean, he plays great every night, you know, uh, so th there was a lot of tough saves he had to make. So, uh, but that third period in general too, Michael, I thought the Bolts, you know, kind of turned on the switch there a little bit. We saw them picking up a lot of momentum. They did a great job shutting down the uh, Panthers, Panthers power play as well. So if they can play like they did in that final 20 minutes at the start of the game next time on Saturday and carry this for as much of the game as they can, they can beat this Florida Panthers team. So this is definitely not a time to hit a panic button by any means. We knew this was coming. This is a good Florida Panthers team. We're on a six game winning streak too. So, uh, you know, there was, there are some positives to, to come out of this game for sure. And credit to the power play as well. The lightning had a fantastic power play. They've, you know, we, we were railing on the power play for a little bit there, a little worried about it, but it seems like our, our power play has come alive here at the end uh, in these last couple of games. Yeah, absolutely. You nailed it on the head. This is a one-game thing. I, I wouldn't war chalk this up to just the Panthers being better. Uh, they, they were the better team tonight. I expect the Lightning to be better on Saturday. Uh, but overall, you, you're exactly right. A lot of people had good games. I wouldn't say they had great games, but a lot of people – had the games where you put in the effort and you aren't really just going through the motions. Yanni Gord always does it. Uh, Andre Palat is one of those guys. Anthony Sorelli for the most part, and then he got hurt. And we'll talk about that later. Uh, but again, none of them matched up to the Braden point. I'm going to carry this team on my back to try to get this victory type mentality. Um, a couple other you know, negatives from this game. Uh, the face-off percentage, uh, dreadful. The Lightning were better in the first or in the uh, last period of the game, but I believe they were at 35% throughout the first two periods, which is just an abomination. Like, you cannot win games with a 35% face-off win percentage. It's not just not going to happen. And I understand that losing Steven Stamkos hurts, but Stamkos is also playing on the wing. So if your power play or if your faceoff percentage hurts that much, then you got problems. And, you know, credit to, again, to Florida, they have some really good centermen. But, you know, 40%, not great. 
Well, and, and here's the thing as well. You know, you look at the end of that third period when there's about two minutes left, the lightning pulled Vassy to give themselves one last shot where they were starting to play really good. And the Panthers, I think, killed off about 20, 30 seconds just off of winning the faceoff and shooting the puck down, getting an icing called. And they did it three or four times. That kept killing, you know, like six seconds off the clock. So you've got to be able to win those faceoffs, uh, you know, when it comes down to the end of the game there. That's really important. Who knows if Lightning would have won one of those faceoffs, you know, maybe they had a chance to try and uh, get a puck, get something set up and get a puck in the back of the net and pull within one. But, you know, that that definitely didn't hurt them. They need to be better in that department. I agree. So hopefully they can, they can you know, play better in the next game in, in the faceoff department. You know, and you make a really good point. And before we get to the, I guess, futures question, uh, this kind of ties in a little bit. We have one final negative to talk about. Uh, with about seven minutes left in the game, Anthony Sorelli takes a really good shot on Sergei Bobrovsky. Bobrovsky makes the save, and then Anthony Sorelli is down. And then he goes into the tunnel and then the locker room, and he does not return. Uh, he will be reevaluated, but Coach Cooper says – it does not look great. And if you're the lightning, this is the last thing you want to hear with Kucherov out for the season, with Stamkos out at least day to day. You don't want your second line center, someone that has been playing pretty well uh, this season to be out with a significant injury. Uh, my question to you, Jake, is what do we do from here? <laughs> well, you got to hope it's not too serious as they might initially think is what you do. Um, but definitely unfortunate. You know, as you mentioned, Sorelli has been playing very good so far this season. So uh, that's 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 a big loss. He's really good on the penalty kill as well. But uh, if he is out long term, you know, I would expect to see someone get called up maybe potentially here uh, from the minors. Maybe Alex Beer Boulette finally gets his opportunity to come up here and get a shot. Uh, I wouldn't mind seeing that. But so basically this is a, a message to the guys down there in the minors. You know, we're talking about how Cal foot learned a lesson and got to be ready to go. Those guys down there in the minors on the taxi squad, they got to be ready to go because they might have an opportunity to come up here and, and try to fill that role. You know what the, you know how the saying goes next man up. So uh, hopefully it's not as serious as we think it is. And he can, can be back soon. I, you know, I'm sure they left him out for the rest of that game. He wasn't coming back no matter what, because it was, you know, late in that game and, and we were almost out of it by that point, but uh, hopefully, hopefully it's not serious, but either way uh, I would expect maybe a guy like ABB, maybe even uh, Jamel Smith, to get called up if it is long-term and have them get an opportunity to jump in that lineup. Yeah. You, you bring up a really good point. There's a, a couple of really, really solid options for the lightning. AVB is killing it again in Syracuse for the third consecutive year. Jamel Smith is a fantastic fourth line center. I'd really like to see him get an opportunity, but another uh, couple of options. You've got Taylor Radish on the wing, Ross Colton at center. If you need another center and you don't want to use Smith, it's weird to say that the young guys need to be ready because when an injury like this happens, you usually go for the veteran. However, with the lightning's change in philosophy in terms of they play with speed, but they also play with tenacity. Someone like Luke Witkowski doesn't fill that role. He's tenacious. He hits you hard, but he's not very fast. And you can't have Patrick Maroon and Luke Witkowski on the same line. I'm telling you, this is not a dig against either one of them, but it's not going to work because they're going to get burned every time. So if you're going to have those guys come in and, and replace, you, you can experiment with the lineup a little bit. Maybe you put Johnson at center, uh, which they tried in this game and uh, did not work. I'll, I'll just put it bluntly. It did not work. Um, and they could possibly put... Uh, Barkley Goudreau on the second line, Blake Coleman on the second line. Uh, it, they have a bevy of options that they could do. Somebody is going to have to step up, uh, whether uh, someone from the minors or someone on the actual active lineup. So we'll see what happens. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see, to see, but uh, they got another game on Saturday, so they got to be ready to go. It's going to be a, a really good game. This is going to be a fun battle to watch. Uh, over this whole entire season of the Lightning versus the Panthers. We got a great uh, rivalry down here in Florida now, and we haven't had it for a long time. So I'm excited for the future here. Very excited for the future. Guys, that is going to do us for us 
on this edition of Quick Strikes. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, feel free to like, share, and subscribe. Hit that bell for notifications. Also make sure to follow us on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, at Bay underscore Baltz. Also, forgot to mention this in the YouTube portion. Comment down below. Forgot to mention this earlier, too. We love to hear about your comments. We love to hear what you thought about the game, what you liked, what you didn't like. We will respond to your comments down below. Uh, and, you know, again, follow us on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, at Bay underscore Baltz for all new your news notes and game recaps. Every single game Twitter is our most used platform. Feel free to subscribe to us there. Uh, guys, for Jake Ricker, my name is Mike Wax. Thank you so much for watching. And remember, despite the loss, your Lightning are defending Stanley Cup champions. Go Bolts.